Hi listeners, it's Kat here from Cast a Guest. I just wanted to take a quick minute outside of the show to let you know about empowerment coaching. I know this is probably confusing a lot of people right now. Outside of telling you about true crime, I work as a life coach, helping others achieve their goals, break down barriers, eliminate limiting beliefs, or anything else a person may need guidance to achieve their most authentic life. The world has been upside down since 2020, and I know a lot of us may be lost, confused, or unsure as to what we want and how to get there. If you think speaking with a life coach may help you, please feel free to contact me at alteregowellness at outlook.com or at alteregowell on Instagram. Okay, now back to our show. Hey folks, how's it going? We appreciate you tuning in to another episode of Cast a Guest. Here's what we got for you today. We got a tampon pulled out of a cat's ass, a new character in the Land Before Time series, Littlefoot's albino cousin, Big Ears, Skeletor with leukemia, and one of the monsters from The Descent covered in poo with glasses. Now I know what you're thinking. If you're thinking, ah, come on, John, those couldn't all go together, you're wrong. They all describe the appearance of today's son of a bitch criminal. Today we are talking about the brave escape of Elizabeth Schoaf. This is going to be an interesting one. Grab yourself a glass and let's get into it. I'm John. And I'm Cap, who's actually not here and making her breakfast of hard-boiled egg and cucumber or some fucking shit and this is castagast Hey, 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 folks. You're touching my leg. <laughs> hey, gentle folk. How's it going? It's going well, thank you. How are Shut you? Shut up. I'm not talking to you. I'm talking to our listeners. My God, my dear, our dear listeners. Why don't you give them our disclaimer for today? Roll the music. Hi, folks. Let's get down to brass tacks here. Brass tacks. We, here at Castagast, have a lighter approach to true crime the lightest approach just just like a feather grazing the crotch (laughs) i don't know what kind of image that puts in your head but i hope it comes across that we do take true crime seriously but true crime is super serious and so in order to avoid constant depression researching and telling these goddamn stories we just have to have a little bit of levity and we also have to have quite a bit of catharsis as we make fun and ridicule the fucking murderers, rapists, uh, their shitty families, and everyone who pretty much makes the whole situation worse. If that's not your cup of tea or whatever the fuck, no problem. And with that out of the way, let's grab ourselves a nice, strong drink and get pissed off while we get right pissed. Thank you. All right, are you ready? Yeah, I'm ready. Let's get on with the goddamn show. Okay. On September 6, 2006, 14-year-old Elizabeth Schoaf was just seconds away from her home after getting off her school bus when she was approached by 36-year-old Vincent F- Phil, y'all? I was oh. trying to say that it's, when I was is researching. Is Vincent a bad person? I was trying to say that when I was researching. I'm like, it sounds like I'm Southern. Phil, y'all. <laughs> Phil, y'all. Is he a bad person? You'll find out. Then maybe his name is pronounced asshole. Good one. Vincent Filia. Filia. Okay. <laughs> isn't it funny? I, somewhere, someone was like, what's your surname? Oh, I've never had a surname before. And the wife is like, why don't you use the noise that you make when you come? And he's like, Filia? <laughs> I'm going to Filia. Oh, my God. Filia. Oh, yeah. <laughs> my name is Venison Filia. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> 
You fucked me up with that whole entire story. You shouldn't write <laughs> such long sentences. Vincent was pretending to be a police officer. He was wearing a homemade uniform and badge. He claimed he was arresting her for a marijuana charge and that he already had her brother. Scared, she believed this man and didn't resist when he put cuffs on her. However, he didn't lead her to a police vehicle. Instead, he led her into the woods. He walked her in all directions, making her disoriented and losing her sense of direction, causing her to become lost. Once he was satisfied that she didn't know where they were, he took her to a bunker he had underground in the woods. What the fuck? A bunker in the woods? The 8x8 bunker was stocked with non-perishable foods, a homemade toilet, and a battery-powered TV. Once he led her inside, he made Elizabeth m- remove her clothes, and it was then that he raped her. Oh, for fuck's sakes. Almost immediately after arriving at the bunker. While this was happening, Elizabeth's mother was concerned that she had not heard from her daughter yet, as she always let her mother know when she got home from school. She called home from work, and Elizabeth's brother answered the phone. When asked where Elizabeth was, he said she wasn't home yet. This immediately did not sit well with her mother, who left work and came straight home. With no signs of Elizabeth, she called 911 and reported her missing. Sadly, Vincent would sexually assault Elizabeth repeatedly up to five times a day. Oh my god. Fuck. While chained around the neck, he would make threats against her brother if she ever escaped. He would air the news stations that were covering her disappearance, and Elizabeth would have to watch her mother in tears on the news begging for her return. God, this is so fucking sadistic. Fucking asshole. Elizabeth could hear the community searching for her. She could hear the helicopters flying around her and volunteers searching the woods above her. Elizabeth, however, had a plan. She was going to survive and get back to her family again. Elizabeth started using reverse psychology. When he called her baby, she would call Vincent baby back. She talked to him like she cared about him. She talked about a future with him. When he said he loved her, she said, I love you back. Oh, Jesus. She got... The amount of willpower... Oh, my God. It's... At 14. Oh, my... Jesus, fucked. She got through to Vincent. He softened his guard around her and started granting her certain privileges. He would take her outside after dark for walks, still chained. He would tell her that there were bombs planted around the bunker to blow up anyone who came near them. He would even let her use his phone to play games on it. One night, while he was sleeping, she texted her mom. Due to being in an underground bunker, the texts weren't going through. Elizabeth held the phone up towards the entrance to the bunker, and one text went through. The text read, quote, Hi, Mom. I'm in a hole across from Charm Hill where the big trucks go in and out. There's a bomb. Call police. End quote. Her mother immediately knew that this text was authentic, running over to her husband frantically showing him the text. The search for Elizabeth intensified after this new information. Police traced the message and was able to determine the owner of the phone. A few days later, they aired the text message on local national news. Oh, no. Oh, fuck. Why would they do that? Vincent saw this and was angry and terrified. Elizabeth was able to convince him that this was not her. She would never have done that to them. He looked at her and asked her, quote, what should I do? End quote. This is when she told them to run because she didn't want them to find him and him end up in jail. He packed up a few things, then left the bunker. Scared that he was still out there waiting for her, Elizabeth waited until morning to make her escape. When morning arrived, she opened up the bunker and saw sunlight for the first time in 10 days. Holy fuck. She remembered Vincent speaking about the bombs, so she took her tentative steps. She started screaming for help, and Officer Dave Thonley, who had been set up in the woods with a team since her disappearance, had heard her cries for help. Holy shit. He began screaming Elizabeth's name back as he searched for her. As soon as Elizabeth laid eyes on Officer Thonley, she ran into his arms. He brought her back to his team, yelling that he had found her. While Elizabeth was with the team getting medical attention, the officer drove to her parents' house. Her mother stated that she saw the cop car pull up. When she saw the officer get out of the car, he was ear to ear smiling, tears coming down his face. When she opened the door, he said, quote, we found her, end quote. More like she found you guys. Holy <laughs> Christ. Elizabeth had an emotional reunion with her family, thinking she was never going to see them again, but she did the unthinkable to survive and find her way back to them. 
Vincent Filial was arrested five miles away from his home. He had a taser, pellet gun, and a knife on his person. Oh my god, a pellet gun? Who is this <laughs> fucking ass? He was charged with kidnapping, rape, impersonating an officer, and other charges such as possession of a flare gun. Right before the trial, Vincent pleaded guilty to all charges. During a televised interview on Dateline right before his trial, this asshat tried saying that Elizabeth was a willing participant. Oh, fuck off, you cunt. That she was happy to be off school and to be seen on TV. That's fucked. He said, quote, it was like a vacation for her, end quote. Yeah, getting fucking raped and bound by a chain. On September 19th, 2007, he was sentenced to 421 years in prison without the possibility oh of parole. How did they even get to that number? That's outstanding. Like, he should like, be fucking put to death. We don't even but... hear that sometimes for murders. On May 3rd, 2021, at the age of 51, Vincent Filia died in prison. No cause of death was released. Well, that's stupid. <laughs> How'd the fucker die? I hope they were just hiding That's a, what I'm assuming, a, a something. prison killing. Mm-hmm. Elizabeth Schof is now 30 years old and a mother herself to a beautiful son. She works as a dental assistant and volunteers at the Kershaw County Sheriff's Department to help educate other parents and children about stranger danger. Her survival story hit the small screen in 2018 in a Lifetime movie called Girl in the Bunker starring Henry Thomas, who is most known for playing Elliot in E.T., I have seen this movie when it came out. Yeah. And it is so uncomfortable watching him play this role. Oh, really? Yeah. It's not... The girl did an amazing job, you know, but it was so uncomfortable watching him play. So that's Elizabeth Schof. And that's the fucking bastard? (laughs) Oh, my God. Yeah, those are her parents, and that's her now. I'm going to cut this, but does she not age? (laughs) I know. (laughs) Holy Christ. Yeah, she, like, literally looks... Exactly the same. Yeah, I believe this was her school photo. Like, that's the school photo that you do. Wow. And then this um, was the bunker. Oh, my God. Really? That fucking people? Like, Jesus, it looks like fucking something built in Minecraft. Yeah. Like, it's so <laughs> fucking dilapidated. I, something I would Look build. Look at that fucking ladder made out of branches, for yeah. shit's sake. Is that a bottle of piss? <laughs> Ooh, even worse, there's a goddamn Diet Pepsi. <laughs> what is this? Oh, you don't want to know what that is. Are those briefs? Or no, uh, a, is that a sock? Fuck. I don't Like, and he made a shelf out of, like, fucking branches and shit. Yeah. Show, let's see the picture of that asshole again. Yes, yeah, so that was him then. Oh, but... my God. He looks like a used Q-tip. He does. Like, he's fucking disgusting. <laughs> Look how long his neck is. What is he? He's like fucking from the land before time. He does not look 36 years old. No, he looks like fucking 86. Yeah. Christ. Why would you put a fucking flak jacket on this asshole? I know it's like to avoid people fucking executing him. Let let, let him get executed. Look how loosely it's put. It's like they really did not like... They left a lot of his chest exposed. Yeah. (laughs) And this is no disrespect to people who wear glasses. John himself being disabled. Get, get ready, get ready, <laughs> folks. Get ready. Cat hates the visually impaired. I do not. I love you. All right, whatever. What do you have to say? A lot of the psychos we cover have glasses. A lot of people have glasses. <laughs> for fuck's sakes. So that is the story, the the amazing survival story of Elizabeth Schof. Holy fuck. Mm-hmm. Man, good for her. I cannot, like, the amount of courage and uh, determination and just stoicism, like, just, like, the, the wherewithal to, to be raped that many times every day and then to fucking say those things mm. to, to get... Um, It's one thing to say the words, but to say them convincingly. Yeah. Like, I feel like I would, like, vomit every time I said it. Like, I would not be able to convince this person that the words I'm saying are, are true. But I, I bet no one has ever said anything like that to this piece of shit. Do we know anything about his life, his upbringing? I did come across a little bit um, in my research. I didn't care to go into his backstory, but I did. Yeah, like it came out like during his trial or something that. Or did he try and blame like his fucking parents or like his upbringing or like a dog, you know, way back in the day when he was in grade six raped him or something? 
like 421 years that judge was like yeah fuck you yeah um i can't even imagine what the mother's thoughts were when she saw the cop car first pull up oh no kidding like she i i did watch and i linked it it will be linked in our our sources um i did watch a youtube uh, the youtube channel unseen covering this story it will be linked in our show notes they show the interview of him saying that she was a willing participant, oh but they're interviewing Elizabeth herself now, and they they show her adorable kid, and they are interviewing the parents, and it like it will bring tears to your eyes. Like you can see that it's like it's still very much. Uh, it it probably still feels so recent for the parents still. Yeah, like they just still look so grief stricken by it, and I imagine that would just age a parent 10 years, you know, going through something like that. Yeah, no kidding, fuck. She definitely did the unthinkable. Like, this guy, like, looks like he lived in that bunker. Well, he is wearing camo. <laughs> and, and plaid underneath. Camo we all know you don't mix ca- uh, camo with plaid. Yeah. God, didn't anyone see Clueless in 1995? Oh my God. Didn't they learn anything? God, I love that he died in prison and they won't tell us the cause of death. No cause of death has been determined. He's like he was shanked a thousand times. He did have history uh, being difficult in prison with the employees. <laughs> That's a funny way to say it. With the employees. The guards? <laughs> which Are they not employed? I know, but it's just like <laughs> he had history with the employees. <laughs> All right. I think it's time for Dylan. Yeah, let's get into Dylan McDermott. Let's get into his wiseness. Is wiseness a word? All right, Sir Dylan, what do you have to tell us today? As much as they deny it, I think people want to be scared. It's a phenomenon why people want to be scared when there's so much violence and craziness in the world. People still really enjoy being scared. It's a conundrum to me. It's hard to explain. It's an unconscious thing, really why people like that so much i don't think it's an unconscious thing i (laughs) i'm very aware of it and why you like that thrill of a good scare yeah the safe the safe yeah you're you you know you're completely safe but you're getting that i watched a whole youtube video once on like the what happens to your body when you're getting scared like when you're watching a horror movie yeah and it, it's pretty fascinating. Oh, really? Like the rise and like the the fluctuations in your in your heartbeat, like yeah. throughout the whole movie, like the rise and fall of your heartbeat. But it was very fascinating. If I if I can find it again, I'll I'll put it in the show notes just for interest. But I yeah, I like the safe scare. I don't like you know. I used to like haunted houses as a kid, but I don't like that now anymore like i remember the last one i did in niagara falls was the frankenstein one and they're like just follow the red eyes and like they're these the tiniest red bulbs up in the top corner of the room and i remember going through there just absolutely terrified and then then we get to a door that says now entering enter at your own risk and i was like we haven't even been in it yet i turned around so fast and and exited and then when i got i came out the way you you went in but the girl didn't like clue into that she's like did you have fun and i'm like loved it and she handed me like the completed sticker (laughs) oh my god that's hilarious (laughs) like i was literally in and out in the same entrance only like two minutes had gone by but I wonder if that's because that doesn't really feel like a safe scare. Like, anybody could be lurking in there. Yeah. You know, we've all seen Friday the 13th and Halloween where these psychos, and like, hide in these things. And those are those are true movies. They are. They're, they're based true. off of... They're true. They're documentarian. They're no, documentarian. Right. They're, they're documentarian. Okay, that's enough for today. All right, we're at 3,000 minutes. All right, thank you for sticking around this long. We'll see you next week. Best of luck to you. Drink up. Goodbye. Bye. You can check us out on YouTube at Catam Concoction. That's C-A-T-A-M-C-O-N-C-O-C-T-I-O-N. <laughs> and on Instagram at cast underscore aghast. 
Remember, there's a silent H. <laughs> <laughs>